Good morning. Welcome to Grace for today. Blessings, everybody. God bless you. May the favor of the Lord shine upon you. This is the day that he has made, and let's just choose to rejoice. We were got it. And to be glad in it. God remains the faithful God. He is faithful to his word. He is faithful to his word. Sometimes, you know, I, I, I usually try to do this little exhortation while y'all are coming on. But just to remind you, I want you to be reminded of this. God keeps his promises. Sometimes what the enemy does is put um, a heaviness on us like a cloud. Good morning, Mother Irma. Hey, Missionary Green. Hey, Sister Valerie Johnson. Uh, the enemy will put a cloud almost on our heads where we cannot. You know how your head's in a fog when you've got sinus issues. Good morning. Hey, James Jr. and Kasten. Hey, Sister Brandy. All right. All right. This is Janet. And you'll have this cloud sitting on. Some of y'all don't know what I'm talking about, but some of you do. You've seen where there has been this cloud. Uh, you couldn't think clearly. What the enemy will do is that he's waging war against you. The Lord gave me something this morning that I'm working on called the strategies of spiritual warfare. Beloved, we need to know how to fight. We need to know when to fight. We need to know when to be quiet. We need to know when to speak. And we need to trust that God is ordering our steps. Wherever we go, whatever we're doing, let's expect. I've been talking now about that word expect. Let's expect, look for God to intervene for us, to move for us, to show up for us. Because God honors his word. This, I need to drink some water. What God is looking for, hey brother, <clears throat> he is looking for our faith in him. Absolutely, we will pray for Cindy. Absolutely. Um, love the Montgomery's. All right, so. God is looking for us to have faith, not our pitiful situation, but I don't know. I say this often, and this to me is what faith is. God, I don't know how you're going to do it. I just know that you can, that you will. Faith is the he, three Hebrew boys thrown into the fiery furnace. Before they got there, they had this testimony. God can deliver us out of your hand, O king. But even if he don't, we're not going to serve your God. That's faith. God, I know you can. If you don't, I know you can. I trust you. I'd rather have him than anything else because I trust him. He will order our steps. Faith says you're going before me. You're making the crooked places straight. You're making the valleys to be brought up. You're causing the mountains to come down. You are blessing me going out and coming in. It doesn't matter what the court says. It doesn't matter what the doctor says. It doesn't matter even what I say, except I'm going to agree with you. I'm going to keep my peace at all costs. What the enemy is doing in this time, we are living in that age as I was walking this morning. We're living in that time where people are calling good evil. And they're calling evil good. Let us be careful not to agree with what the world is saying. Let's call it what God calls it. I've been praying that truth and righteousness will prevail. That God will intervene with divine intervention into the lives of the people of God. That he will begin to turn things around in our favor. That he will begin to give us assurances, reminding us of whose we are. Beloved, you belong to God. We Many of us are like Gideon, before the angel told him, uh, you need to go do this. You see the problem. You got a fire in your belly. You go do it. I'm going to help you, but I, you go do it. You be obedient. Thank you all for sharing as soon as you come on. I got about nine minutes to get my lesson done. I don't know if I'll make it, but I'm going to try. Listen, God bless everybody. Thank you all for sharing as soon as you come on. Appreciate that. Um, listen, let's go back to... Um, 
let's go back to verse. I think I got to verse 35 yesterday, but I want to start um, about there again. Verse 34. Let's look there. Let's look there at verse 34. I, I feel like I need to say some things to the people of the Lord about really, uh, as they say, hunkering down. When the storm is raging, they tell you to find a safe place and hunker down till the storm is past. Beloved, when you're in a storm, find a safe place and hunker down. Not in fear, but in confidence toward God. Confidence toward God. He makes my way plain. So verse 34 says, but the spirit of the Lord came up on Gideon and he blew a trumpet and a visor was gathered after him. The, the, the word, the name, a visor, A-B-I-E-Z-E-R, it means the father of help. Some people, uh, and the enemy wants to make sure that you never a, turn to the father of help. Turn to the bomb in Gilead. Turn to the God of all might. Turn to the Lord of hosts. That phrase Lord of hosts refers to an army, the host of the Lord. That's talking about the army of God. Good morning, Mother Stallings. We, we are the ones who will call on the army of God to fight for us. But the Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon. He had never encountered such before. But the Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon. He blew a trumpet and the Father of help gathered after him. The people of God, all they heard were a trumpet blowing. They knew something was stirring around here. They were waiting. It's like the man who was laid at the gate, uh, laid uh, at the pool of Bethesda. And the scripture says <clears throat> he had laid there for 38 years. And every time he got ready, the water was troubled. He couldn't get there fast enough, but he didn't need to wait any longer because Jesus was there. They heard the trumpet and knew that was the sound we've been waiting for. That's what we've been waiting to hear. Rise up, people of God. Rise up, armies of the Lord. God will go before you. He will fight for you. And he sent messengers to the other tribes, let's just say that. And they came up to meet him. They came up. They were looking to be summoned. They were tired of hiding in caves, in dens, away from, uh, so they could not have what belonged to them. And Gideon said unto God, and this is where Gideon does what we call, we fleece God. He did this. He said, listen, if you will save Israel by my hand, as you've said, behold, Gideon, it's, this is, and, and we think sometimes this is awful, but really it's human nature. Look at this. Gideon obeyed God. He followed the Lord. He th pulled through down the altar of Baal. This is local. He, they, he threw down the altar of Baal, cut down the groves. That's local. But here, God is saying, I want you to deliver the nation of Israel out of the hand of their oppressors. What God looks for is, can I trust you in this before I give you this? Can I trust you in this little thing before I expand your territory? Will you be faithful in this before I give you more? He that is faithful in little will be faithful in much. He that is unfaithful in little will be unfaithful in much. God is looking at your track record. So Gideon says, I will put a fleece of wool on the floor. And if the dew be on the, on the fleece and it be dry up on the earth beside, then I shall know that thou wilt save Israel by my hand. As you've said, he said, listen, what I'm going to do, God, is this. If you're going to really do this to save the nation of Israel. If you're really going to save the nation of Israel. I, I need you to confirm your word. Show me. He says, I'm going to put this piece of fleece. On the ground. I want the fleece 
to be, um, I believe he says, uh, fleeced the dew to be, the fleece to be wet, but the ground to be dry. Number one, the dew always saturates the ground, but God says, and God is looking for people who will trust him and without, without hesitation. He says, listen, I want this. You know what fleece is? It's the skin of a lamb over sheep and it's got the fur on the top side. He says, I want the fleece to be wet and the ground beside it to be dry. God can do anything. He says, listen, the scripture says in verse 38, and it was so. so. For he rose up early on the morrow and thrust the fleece together and wringed the dew out of the fleece, a bowl full of water. He said, listen, God, he, God didn't just dampen the fleece. He drenched it so that Gideon squeaked. Where's me something? Y'all know I need something? Here, let's use this. He took it and he wrung it out. Sque squeezed all the water out of it until it was a bowl full. The scripture says a bowl full of water. Gideon said unto God, verse 39, let not thine anger be hot against me and I will speak but this once. Let me prove, I pray thee, but this once with the fleece. Let it now be dry only upon the fleece and up all the ground, upon the ground, all the ground, let there be dew. And God did so that night, for it was dry upon the fleece only, and there was dew on all the ground. As New Covenant believers, we have 66 books. We don't have to fleece God, so to speak. But here, the point is, is that God has no issues confirming his inheritance, the scripture says, when it is weary. God has no issue saying to us, I'll confirm my word. I will send someone your way to speak to you. I will send someone to remind you of what I've said. Sometimes we need more than one uh, voice. We need more than one person who said, blah, blah, blah. When somebody else says it, it's almost like we heard it for the first time because the first time we heard it, we really didn't hear it. But when God speaks once, yea, twice have I heard it. Power belongs to God. That's the word of God. Power belongs to God. He will confirm his word. I feel like a wild woman waving my hands, but listen, God expects us to believe what he says. He will come through for us. He will come through for us. He will come through for you. Don't believe the lies of the enemy. No weapon formed against you will produce what the enemy intended. God did it. God said he wanted, uh, Gideon wanted confirmation. That was between him and God. That was between him and God. But God showed up. God showed up. He's the same God back then. He's the same God right now. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We don't have to put a fleece out. We can look into the word of God and find scriptures that confirm what his word has said. I found many times one scripture that I remember from decades ago that impacted my life. The same is true for us as the sons and daughters of the Lord. God wants to use us for his glory. He wants you to be that voice crying in the wilderness. You may never reach the nations per se, but you ought to be able to impact where you are. You ought to be able to impact where you are. Not so consumed with my own desires, but Lord, what's your will? Let your will be done. Let your will be done. Let your will be done. In me, work in me both to will and to do of your good pleasure. Help me just to desire to do what your will says. 
for Edna. Tomorrow we'll go to chapter 7. So go ahead. Judges chapter 7. If it, go ahead and read ahead of me and allow the Lord to speak to you. Listen, I believe God is pouring something in us during this indomitable series that we will be reminded that no matter where you are, what you've gone through, what the enemy has stolen from you, God is able to restore and to redeem and to turn things around for you. Let's pray. Father, we honor you and we bless you and we thank you because your word will not return to you void and unprofitable, but it will accomplish everything you've sent it out to. We ask you to let your will be done in us. Let your glory be revealed in our lives. Cover your sons and your daughters. Heal us from the inside. That every negative word spoken about us, to us, over us is a lie and we will cast those thoughts down. We will bring them into captivity and submit them to the word of God. And if they don't measure up, help us to cast them aside. Help us to trust you above what we see, hear, or feel. Redeem our lives from destruction. Restore the years, the years that the canker worm and the palmer worm have eaten. Father, we thank you that you open doors before us. You cover us and you cover our little ones. Bring healing to our bodies. Thank you, Lord, to bring healing to Cindy's body. Father, I thank you now that you give speedy recovery for those who have health challenges. Father, I thank you that you would give us wisdom and direction. Heal our minds. Heal our thinking. Heal, oh, lift the fog from our heads, from our minds, the tactics of the enemy. Father, I thank you that your word will not return to you void, but it's accomplished what you sent it out to. Let it be done in us. We thank you for to receive it even now. Let your Holy Ghost remind us through the day the words you've spoken to us. Let us be the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath. Bless us going out and coming in. Father, I thank you now for those who are married, whose spouses don't do right. God, intervene. Hey, intervene. Those who are in relationships and it's just kind of wacky. God, get them out. Even if they don't want to, if it's your will, get them out and turn things around for them. You give new beginnings. Father, I thank you that you bring healing to our homes, healing to our children. In the name of Jesus, Father, in everything you've not designed for us, cut it off. Everything that you didn't put our names on, cut it off. Thank you for it even now. Receive it done in Jesus' name. So it is. Amen. God bless you all. Hey, that little part about uh, relationships, I wasn't talking about marriages. That's not what I was talking about. Uh, in marriage, I believe you need, to, you need to be there until the Lord gives you direction. I do believe that. I did. So I'm not teaching anything that I haven't lived through. And one day I'll share my testimony, but today ain't the day. All right, everybody. Hey, listen, don't forget to share the video. Type in, catch the replay. Hashtag graced for today. Don't forget first Sunday coming up this Sunday. I will be in Loosedale, Mississippi at the New Testament Church of God in Christ uh, for it's called a joy day honoring the first lady of that church, uh, Lady Angie Cowan. Those of you who can come, come. Those of you who can't, catch us live and uh, pray my strength in the Lord. All right, so hey, share, and I hope that I'll, you will see me in the morning at 7.15 a.m. Central Time. Until then, remember this, time spent in the Word of God is never wasted, beloved. You have been graced for today. Have a great day, everybody. Peace.